Hello my friends and welcome back to another painting session and another painting video. And in this painting video I have recently bought the Resident Evil 2 board game. So I'm going to start my collection off by painting Ada Wong. She's one of the playable characters in the board game and one of the main characters through the video game. If you're a fan of the video games you already know all of the story and everything. So without further ado we're going to get straight into the painting. As always, I like to start with the skin tones, so I'm going to start with a basic skin tone, which is a nice light colour to begin with, and then we'll tone it down and tone it back up. Now these little Resident Evil miniatures, this is a Steamforged Games box set, are already pre-assembled, pre-built, pre-based, uh, you don't have to do anything other than prime and paint them. So um, what I found was once I primed the miniatures and I painted the miniatures, uh, the paint sticks to the miniatures quite well, but it can rub off a little bit easier than normally. Uh, so just try to take your time and be a little bit careful with where you're painting. The miniatures are actually quite small as well, um, so it does take a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice. So I'm using uh, for the dress, on this one I'm using a heavy red as the base colour. So once I've done the skin, I'm moving on to the dress and just using a heavy red colour. This is part of the uh, Vallejo Extra Opaque range. Um, and it's a really nice thick um, heavy sort of color to begin with so that makes a really good base color now for that uh, from that I'm going to one of my favorite colors which is the German gray this is a really really dark gray it does have a very small hint of um, like a sort of um, very light sort of hint of blue to it um, but this is a good alternative to black because this allows you to tone it down and then tone it back up without losing too much detail. Sometimes by using just plain black you can lose a little bit of detail. Um, so it's always good to have a really dark, dark grey um, as opposed to just using a flat black colour. For this I'm painting the gun, um, her hair, um, the belt the wrist strap for her watch and her shoes as well so trying to paint a little bit of a mixture of uh, things together I'm trying to be very very careful with the strap for a wristwatch actually because this is a really really tough uh, small little detail to catch hold of so I'm just using the very very tip of the brush and just taking my time and moving on to the leggings, again using another colour that I use quite a lot. This one is Dark Rust, so this is part of the Panzer Aces range. And this colour is really good as a base colour to build other sort of lighter colours up from. So I normally use this as like a base colour for things like leathers and skin tones and things like that. It's a really, really good colour. So because she's wearing leggings rather than having um, uh, the, the skin on her legs, we're going to paint this a dark brown so that it matches her sort of um, outfit from the games then. And from there, I'm just going to add the silver just across things like the key, the belt buckle, uh, and a few little areas like that. Just also going to put a small dab of silver just on the wristwatch, so just on the uh, little area just on the back of her wrist. This was a very fiddly little bit, so just try to take your time as much as you can. Once I've done all of the uh, basic parts then, I'm just going to use a very small amount of the Army Painters Flesh Wash. Now, someone asked me the other day in the comments if I water down my uh, washes from the Army Painter at all. And the answer is no, I don't water down the washes as such. I do use a damp brush however, so say if I've rinsed the brush off, instead of taking all of the water off the brush, I do keep the brush a little bit damp to use the washes, just so that they move around the miniature a little bit more freely. Um, but also something to bear in mind with your watches, washes, is just to be careful as to where they pool because you don't want them to pool too much and sit um, too heavily in one area as it will make the, uh, the underlying colours a little bit darker. From there I'm doing the rest of it, uh, so I'm just uh, putting a shade or a wash of a dark tone across the rest. If you wanted to use uh, something like a um, Null Noil from Citadel, that would equally do as well. It's just that I'm painting this one with a dark tone. And you can see with the dark tone just how heavily that has reduced the colour and the brightness and the vibrance out of that dress. So by using the dark tones so of this black wash on top of the red, you can see just how much of the uh, colour and vibrancy has been taken out. So what we're going to do then is build that back up. So you're going back to the heavy red and I'm using this um, quite thin. So I've watered this down a little bit with a flow improver. You could use water if you prefer. And just using again the very tip of the brush, just trying to manipulate where I put the, 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 um, the red tones now. So I'm just trying to 
um, use the tip of the brush to catch the folds of the dress and just catch the sort of area where you can see the light is catching and I'm just leaving little gaps here and there just so that the, the, the shadow and the darker area underneath is showing through as well. That way it's going to give us a little bit more depth, a little bit more um, consistency through our painting so that it allows the painting to have more um, shadowy areas, more dark areas, as well as the light areas as well. So it gives your model a lot more depth and it's a lot more striking to look at. Now once that red has dried, I also like to use a bloody red as a highlighting co colour. So what I'm doing here is I've mixed a little bit of um, the bloody red into the heavy red. So what I'm doing is I'm using about a 50-50 mix. So that means pretty much 50% of both colours. So there's equal parts of both colours. And what this will do, this will allow the red underneath then to have a little bit more of a, um, a highlight. So it's not becoming too much of an extreme highlight. What it's doing is it's creating a highlight from the original tone. And that will allow the colours then to sort of blend together in a nicer, more even fashion. So again, just trying to pick up on the highest area so just the highest raise point so that we can get where the highlights are coming from and just leave in some more of the red and things like that into the deeper recess points. Now once we've done the red I'm going to move back onto the hair so whereas that is toned down because of the, the shade and the wash I'm going back to the original German grey and what I'm doing with this I'm just using the very tip of the brush to follow along with the hair so again just trying to pick out on the raised areas. Now you could dry brush this but dry brushing does in turn, uh, for me, leave things a little bit too um, uh, rough and ready and it is a little bit harder to sort of uh, manipulate and control. So sometimes if you're using dry brushing, especially on a miniature as small as this, you might get that dry brushing on some of the other colours. So instead I'm just taking a little bit of extra time and I'm just painting this by hand um, and just creating a little bit of character out of the hair in that sense. And for the next stage, I'm just using a little bit of white in that German grey, and I'm just highlighting that German grey a little bit. So I've, I haven't gone for an equal part of 50-50. What I'm doing with this is I'm just adding a little bit of white, just to create a slight highlight to the original colour, and then again, just using the very tip of the brush, just to build up a few areas where that highlight will be. And from there then, moving back onto that skin tone. So we're using the basic skin tone again, a little bit watered down so it's a nice thin even even um, level of paint so I'm using the uh, flow improver again and again if you want to use water you can the only thing to be uh, very very careful with if you're using water to mix your paints is to make sure that the water pot that you're using is clean water especially on something like skin tones because if you do use water to thin your paints down and you've just used grey then that is also going to influence the colour so you're not going to get the same vibrancy out of the paint so just take your time, be very careful, try to get as much little bits around the, uh, the face as possible, so things like the nose, the chin, the cheekbones especially. As you can see, I'm just trying to pay a little bit more attention to things like the collarbone here, where um, I'm trying to leave a little bit of an area where the, uh, the wash and the shade has sat, um, and just building up the colours, building up the tones step by step. And the same thing with the arms then. So when you're painting around sort of the arms, the shoulder, just trying to leave little lines here and there just to show a little bit of definition and a little bit of tone between sort of um, the areas where um, sort of like the folds of her arm and where the shade and things like that is just sat. So that again, it builds a bit more depth and a bit more um, contrast. The last thing you want to do is just go straight back over something that you've used a wash and then losing out on all of that detail. Because the wash, the idea is the wash is going to sit into the recessed areas, into those little pooled areas, and from there then you can build the colours back up, you see. Um, so yeah, just following along the lines, following along, it's a little bit like painting by numbers at this stage, because you're pretty much just painting the raised areas, leaving the wash in the more um, settled, sort of grooved areas, and by doing so it's just building that character and building the tone on the skin. So what I'm doing here then is, whereas I had mentioned we had done the leggings, because we painted the dark tone on them again, this has darkened these leggings down a lot. So we're going back to the original colour which was that dark rust, which is a really really dark brown. And again I'm building this tone up and I'm just painting this across the leggings. But while I'm doing so, just trying to leave a few very, very faint and small lines and gaps. Again, just building that sort of um, texture and depth as if there's creases. Because if you do look around the knees and especially the back parts of the legs, there are a few creases and things built into the model as well. So, so painting those up and building those colours up is going to be a really good idea. 
So there you can see, just using that brown. And what I'm doing now is just using this to, to try to catch those raised points just across like uh, the back parts of the muscle and around the legs here. Like I say, you're trying to leave a few little gaps in the painting just so that it creates that depth and those creases. And it gives you something more for... Um, it gives your eyes something more to focus on when you're looking at it rather than just one flat colour. So what we're going to do from there is we're just going to build this up in a very, very light, slight, easy tone, see? So we're using that original dark rust, but we're mixing in a very small bit of leather brown. Now this leather brown is a lighter colour, so you don't want to put too much in, but just enough that that colour will stand off the original colour. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to paint those leggings, but it doesn't matter if we leave in some of those brush strokes. It doesn't matter if we leave in gaps and things like that for where the creases are, because this is going to eventually build to that tone. Because you've got your original base color, you've got your shade, back up to your base color, and then a slight highlight as well. And it'll detract from it just being one flat color. It'll give your eye something more to focus on. And there we go, just going to go back and highlight the keys. So with this I'm just going to, uh, the silver areas, now I'm just using a shining silver from the Army Painter. Um, again you can use any sort of bright silver that you like. This one is uh, one of my favourite ones. It has a really good consistency and it is a very very bright colour as well. It does stand out on your models, does make the, the, the silver do exactly what it says on the tin and it does make the silver shine. So just Paint in a little bit across the buckle, paint in the key. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing on the pistol as well, so just a little bit of dry brushing across the edges of the pistol, just to bring out a little bit more of the, um, the detail. From there, I'm using a Citadel Technical colour. So for this I'm using a, uh, uh, the Waystone Green Technical. And that's all I'm doing here is just using the tip of the brush. I'm just dabbing this just across the edge of the key here. Because I've looked online and the club key from the game uh, is a green jeweled or a green green gemmed key. So that's all I'm trying to do is add a little bit of this uh, technical green onto the key. And this will allow the, uh, the, the key area to shine. But only on the club part, see? So the rest of the key is going to stay silver. And there we go, it's one of the final touches now, just using leather brown on its own, just on the inside grip of the pistol. And there she is, complete. As quick and as simple and as easy as that. With the skin tones, you can build those tones up a little bit more if you want, and use a highlighter as well. Um, I didn't really need to, I didn't see the need to, because the difference between the skin tones and that heavy red, uh, they stand off enough already. Um, but again, as always, you can build up and build up and add more layers, more textures, and all things like that to it, as much as you like. But it's a nice, simple, quick and easy paint job of Ada Wong from the Resident Evil game, and that's the perfect, perfect character to start my box set off with, and I will post some more videos soon. I've also quickly printed a small poster from the internet which I've then used uh, PVA glue just to stick onto the base so that it adds a little bit more to the umbrella theme and the Resident Evil theme and things like that. As always my friends thank you very very much for tuning in and watching and I will see you guys on the next one.